this teardrop trailer it's a great trailer it has a couple of frustrating things that I've had to deal with for the year and a half that I've owned it I'm gonna talk about the water system right now it doesn't have any gray or black tanks which is fine that's actually one of the reasons we like it simple we don't have to fool with that we, we have a cassette toilet on order uh, we just in the past have just used restrooms at state parks and places that we've gone but now that we're starting to boondock a lot more we're adding solar to it so i'm going to show you how i built the solar into it i'm probably going to upgrade it to a lithium battery and then also i'm going to upgrade the storage tank on this thing um, i'm actually not going to make any physical changes to it but i'm going to show you a ridiculous flaw of the system and how to double the amount of usable water that you can have from it you're going to need some tools from home depot um, I've got a, a threaded collar right here that I'm going to adapt to a hose barb with some uh, step downs and then the actual threaded hose barb adapter. And then also I'm going to need some PVC pipe to make the pickup and then they'll all attach together. Um, and to determine the length, I'm going to take a ruler, determine the depth of the tank, then cut off the uh, appropriate amount going from the the collar to the bottom and you can see the size of the pipe everything's assembled just using cement and then I need to drill the appropriate size hole in the tank like you see here that way the collar will fit very snugly where it's supposed to be This was in my tank. That's all gross too. I sucked it out with my shop vac when it feels like plastic. It's got like almost like a glue that hardened or an epoxy. I'm gonna fill it up with water now. See if I can flush all that grossness out with my shop vac. So this is the connector that goes directly into the vacuum side of the pump, which is right here. Can't quite see it. There, I've unconnected it. And then it picks up off of this little drain line and that's what's going into the tank. The reason this design is terrible is once the water reaches halfway down the tank, as you can see, it's coming off of this line right here, halfway on the tank. Then guess what? Air comes into it, the pump loses its prime and you don't get but half the capacity of the water tank. So instead, what I've designed is a pickup tube that will extend all the way to the bottom and get, let's say 90%, right? And then this ledge, this little lip here, I'm gonna seal it up real good. That way it won't leak. We can put it under pressure. So it fits down real snug like that. And then now I need to redirect this vacuum side connector to here, so then it can pick water up from over there. And then this, I just need to cap it off because I don't need it anymore. Look, new parts. I hate plumbing so much. Plugged in hand tight. This wire's running around. Going to that tank right there to pick up. I'm gonna cap this off. Cap this off. And we're ready. Completed setup. I rerouted this hose to pick up from here into the vacuum side of the SureFlow pump. The output has not changed. This valve that switches between city water and uh going to the shower, also not changed. The input, unchanged. The breather tube, unchanged. This is now capped off. 
pointless. I think you can see the water level in this video. It is above this. So what you'll hear when I pull this, right? Boom, it's draining water. But if you recall, it's only gonna drain until it hits halfway down. Everything below that, it's not gonna drain. So, and this trailer is level by the way, I've leveled it. So let's test this water. Pick up and then it's down. I've got it, it just blazes a bucket. Okay, that's working great. I've taken the aerator off just in case there's any chunks from that shavings of plastic, it might pull through. So we can see the water line. And we'll come back in a minute when it gets below where it would normally work. Here, pulling some air in. Point normally, air would be coming into this line, which would be going up to this pickup, and it wouldn't be able to prime and pull water anymore. But because I've changed the pickup, I'll actually be able to get, I don't know, maybe 90%. Let's see how long it runs. Still running. That water line, look at it. It's at the W on the welcome, well below that line right there that it's supposed to be able to run at. The 10 gallon tank, and I should be able to get at least nine gallons out of this. And we will test this in a minute once I'm done by using a five gallon bucket to determine how much I've got. Okay, I'm gonna go dump this. This is pretty much gonna make a mess. All right, now it's just a fast forward of me finishing draining it out to see how much is left in the thing. Looking at the level of water on this, is there a, a marker on this thing? No, that's at least four gallons. That is an awful design. And all I did was use about $30 worth of parts. Look on the 2020 versions of these, the new ones, this is a 2018. And I see they've completely changed the water system. Now the, the fill hose goes all the way to the bottom and I think it comes out from underneath. I get that, it's so much better now. The only downside to what they've done there in that scenario is that I think the water tube goes underneath the frame and comes up. Well, if this is supposed to be an off-road trailer, you don't want any water lines hanging below the frame. That absolutely is gonna get ripped off somewhere. So this design, what they should have done, I think, was slightly elevate the bottom of the tank. That way, you could actually drain the tank completely, but stay within the bounds of the frame and not go underneath the, the vehicle. Anyways, I love this trailer. It's a great trailer. I'm working through the flaws. I'll show you some other stuff that I did at some other time. Thanks.